In this video, I will teach you some of the most basic, most important concepts in statistics to do with probability. I will use a simple common problem of rolling a fair six-sided die to introduce you to the multiplication, addition, and conditional probability rules of two events. I also explain and use the complement of an event. In this lesson, I use logic and formulas to solve the problems. However, in a different video, I solve a similar problem using set notation and Venn diagrams. Okay, so let's get started with the problem. We have the outcome of rolling a fair six-sided die. Our first step is to set up the events. Here, I give you those. We have A be the event of rolling an even number, B be the event of rolling an eight, and let C be the event of rolling a square number. Notice here, when we're talking about the events, it's the outcome of rolling the die once. You have to make sure that you understand that, that it's not, we're not continually rolling this die or we're not even rolling it two times, we're only rolling it once and we're talking about the outcome of that single roll, okay? We also want to remember that the probability of anything is always greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So it's a fraction or decimal between zero and one or it could be zero or one themselves. So just make sure that your answer makes sense. To get the probability, we will look at all the outcomes that satisfy our problem, okay? So if we were looking for the probability of A, it would be all of the outcomes that satisfy A out of all the possible outcomes, okay? So it's always out of the total sample space that we're looking at. In this example, our sample space would be all possible outcomes for a die roll. So that would be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our sample space has six possible outcomes in total. A, the event A, is rolling an even number. So we have to think of all the outcomes that satisfy that. Well, 2, 4, and 6 are all even numbers. So we have three outcomes out of a possible six that satisfy A. So our probability of A is 3 out of 6 or 1 half. You could also think that half of the outcomes are even and half of them are odd, so one half is also the answer directly. We also have that let B be the event of rolling an 8. That might sound kind of silly to you because how can you possibly roll an 8 when there's only the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? So you're right, you cannot roll an 8. It's not a possible outcome. It still gets a probability though. It's a probability of 0 because it'll never happen, okay? We also have let C be the event of rolling a square number. Okay, so sometimes they'll throw some other term at you and that's why it's good practice to, to just get as many problems done as you possibly can to be you know, exposed to all these different terms that you might have forgotten about from a long time ago. So what is a square number? Well, it's an integer that if you take the square root of it, you'll also get an integer. So 4 is a square number because you can take the square root and you get 2. Also in our sample space of those numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the only other one that's a square number is 1 because you take the square root of 1, you get 1. If you take the square root of any of those other numbers, you're not going to get an integer, okay? Um, so we have to think of what outcomes satisfy C. So what outcomes are square out of all the possible outcomes? Well, we just said numbers 1 and 4 are square. So that's two outcomes out of the possible 6, or 1 out of 3. Okay? If I'm being asked multiple problems, like what you can see here that we're going to solve, I often will find those individual probabilities for the different events, uh, just because it makes it a lot simpler as you move through the other problems, a lot of times you're going to need them anyway. So I just find them right off the bat. Okay, it also gets you thinking about the logic of the whole problem. So you can see the problems there. You can copy them down as we go through. We're just going to start with A here. So we have find the probability of A and B. Okay, so this symbol here is the intersection symbol. Okay. We have to have a few associations with that symbol. We want to associate the word and, okay, intersect, 
Okay. And multiplication. I'm just going to put a multiplication sign there. Okay. So these things should all be associated with each other. And how do you remember the word and goes with this symbol? Well, if you made a line through the symbol, you would get an A. So that's how I've always remembered it. And when I'm reading it out loud, I make it very easy for myself. So I would read this out loud as find the probability of A and B. Okay? All right, so although we could use the multiplication rule to solve this problem, which I'm going to introduce later, uh, we're just going to use some logic to start. Okay? Using logic will often be a faster method if it's easy enough to do. And if you can't do it, then you can always rely on a formula. Okay, so I've also like to read the problem aloud to myself um, about using the words of the events. Okay, so here I would say, what is the probability of rolling an even number, because that's A, and rolling an 8? Okay, remember, we're only talking about a single roll, and we need to find all the outcomes that satisfy both A and B, because of that word and, because of that intersection sign. So which outcomes are both an even number and an 8? Well, no outcome can be an 8, so nothing satisfies B. Um, so no outcome would ever satisfy both. Therefore, this probability is simply 0. Okay, so I have to cut the video short here just to fit in with uh, YouTube. So if you can continue on to the next video, I will do the next part of the question.